Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to PTED Chemistry channel. In this tutorial video, I'll continue uh, this lecture tutorial on atomic structure and the periodic table. Specifically in this uh, video, uh, we will go through a lot of these ideas on electronic configuration. Electronic configuration basically refers to how do we fill the electrons in the electron shells. If you recall earlier in uh, the previous lecture tutorials, we have the structure of an atom with the nucleus in the middle that consists of the protons and the neutrons. Together, the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus of an atom is called nucleons, and the electrons are happily circulating or orbiting around the nucleus. Uh, in this area, uh, in this region of space, we call electron shells. All right, so the electrons are surrounding the nucleus in electron shells. So electronic configuration is basically to do with how do we fill the electrons inside those electron shells uh, and it's for elements with proton number 1 to 20 so that means you really need to know for element 1 all the way to element 20 that is why I ask you to actually remember the elements uh, across the first period, the second period, the third period I've used this word called period and that is to do with uh, this to do with this idea, period number is to do with the number of occupied electron shells and this is stating it is not explaining okay so i will explain to you where do they come from but you'll be able to just use the predict table and state that prayer period number whatever whatever or you'll be able to do group number whatever whatever you will see that there is these groups one to seven these are roman numeral so roman numeral as you see in the periodic table on top of the periodic tables you got one two three etc etc seven and then you got eight i'll just show you the periodic table very quickly so these are group one group two group three four five six seven eight they told you it's a group so these are roman numeral and it's very important not to make any mistake at all roman numerals must never be confused with uh, the arabic numeral which is one two three four so this is the first row because this is the first row of the periodic table this is actually the first electron shell that you fill in and there are two elements in the first shell so this horizontal row is not called a group horizontal row in a periodic table is called period so this is period one so there are two elements in period one there are two electrons maximum that can fill the first shell which is period one because after you fill in helium then you go on to a new period a new period from element two to element three is a new period this is period two again is arabic numeral and not roman numeral this is period two but it's group one this is period two second row of the predictable but it's group two this is period two and it's group three and so on and so forth all right um, so in the second period you have one two three four five six seven eight so there are eight elements that fill across period two and if you remember from the previous lecture tutorial video we talk about atoms atoms are uncharged but we know that each of these elements they increase in proton number atomic number is the same as proton number the atomic number or the proton number increases by one as you go across the periodic table so across the second period you increase each proton by one as you go to the next element and since the atoms are uncharged therefore the number of electron must be equal to number of protons you have to use in proper words uh, because you are in theory paper i can do it verbally but when i write i usually just use the hashtag and it's nice and easy in a mcq paper but in a structured theory paper you have to actually use the proper full words to say that the number of electrons equal to number of protons in order for the total charge to be cancelled remember relative charge of electron is minus one relative charge of one proton is plus one for each proton that you increase that is the atomic number increasing because atomic number is the same as proton number that means you're also increasing the number of electrons by one so altogether across the second period or period two which is the second horizontal row 
a row is horizontal across a periodic table. So across a period two, you are actually filling in uh, eight electron maximum because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons maximum in the second shell. Okay, as you reach to neon, once you reach eight electrons in the second shell, it's completely filled now. Okay, so what is important about what is important about group eight? So V I I I uh, has uh, completely completely fill outermost outermost shell so we are talking about the outermost shell is completely filled for the case of helium the outermost shell is the first shell it can only fit two electrons maximum for the second period elements it's, uh, neon here so it's a noble gas it's in group eight it's given for you in the predict table it's a completely filled outermost shell in this case, your outermost shell is not period one, it's not the first shell, it's the second shell that is completely filled with eight electron maximum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you're at neon. After neon, the next element has to be in a new period. That's why element number 11 goes to period three, Arabic numeral. Period three, third horizontal row, period three fills one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is period three, it fills all the way to argon, and then after argon, then you will go to period four, okay, the fourth horizontal row, first, second, third, fourth. So potassium and calcium are in period four, okay, but potassium is in group one, calcium is in group two, and so on and so forth. We just need to know for the first 20 elements. So in terms of electronic configuration, if I just go back to this, we are saying that electrons are arranged in shells these are not physical shells we are simply drawing them in such a way so that it's easy to distinguish the first shell is closest to the nucleus the second shell is the outer one and in this case we only draw up to third shell because we are we just have electrons that fill up to third shell all right and um, actually there's a fourth shell as well because you fill the fourth horizontal row for elements up to elements 20 potassium and calcium calcium is element 20 if you look at the syllabus, when you revise, you have to use the syllabus to revise every single thing that the syllabus say. You should be able to do. Element 20 fills up to the fourth shell, okay? So the first shell can only have maximum. This is maximum number of electrons. Where does the two come from? Look at your horizontal row, maximum two electrons. Second horizontal row, maximum one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight maximum third period one two three four five six seven eight that is where this eight and eight come from they come from your predict table which you are given for free in the real exam that is why chemistry is probably one of the easiest bit to score for your combined science chemistry because you are given the predict table in the exam and the predict table tell you the answer all right now let's really work out the electronic configuration okay so for example you have this carbon atom in your periodic table, it will appear as 6 and 12. In your periodic table, it labels this as atomic number. Atomic number, you know, is the same as proton number. Stated in the syllabus in the previous lecture tutorial, atomic number or proton number tells you the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. The 12 at the bottom is defined as relative atomic mass, and this is given in your periodic table. I can show you the predict table again and again and again but you can read it relative atomic mass is this number at the bottom they did not say it is a nuclear number or mass number that's because it is not when you write the number to the far left and not in the middle this is not the periodic table this is the nuclide notation this is the internationally accepted notation all right on top there is what you call mass number it is not equal it is not the same as relative atomic mass most of the time they look similar but it is not the same thing okay there's something you must keep in mind the number at the bottom is your proton number which is definitely the same as the proton number or the atomic number in your periodic table because proton number is the identity of the element so provided you still have carbon and carbon the proton number never changes all right so how to draw the electronic configuration so every single thing in the periodic table okay every 
everything in periodic table has no overall charge okay if we are talking about a single atom such as this you don't really need to find the number of electrons because the number of electron must be equal to the number of protons for it to be an atom <coughs> so this is one way of looking at it but if i were doing it i would really just look at the periodic table have a look at the periodic table carbon is element number six but to get to carbon you play the snake ladder game start from hydrogen the first element fill the first row maximum two electrons after the first row of first period has been filled the first shell has been filled i have to fill the second period so for carbon for example just now carbon to reach from here to here you need to go here then fill in the new shell so there's two two in the first shell comma two in the first shell comma fill in the second shell one two three and four so to reach the carbon you reach one two three and four in the second shell period two means second shell one two three four to reach carbon so there is four so there is first shell so we read first shell from left to right and there's the second shell the fact that we don't write anything after this means that there is no third shell that's because carbon is found in period two it only fills up to second shell so second shell in the case of carbon is the outermost shell is the outermost shell and there are four electrons in the outermost shell and it's in group four so the group number tells you how many outer shell electrons you have in this case it's in second shell because it's a period two element and there are four electrons in the outermost shell electrons all together total total number of electrons is going to be two plus four which is six electrons and you know for an atom number of proton must be equal to the number of electrons because the charges must balance out since atoms are in charge and therefore if you have six electrons you have six protons number of protons is the identity of the element if you have six proton that means your element number six because atomic number is number six and therefore it's carbon so you can work forward or you can work backward it's the same idea again and again and again all right so of course then just now we reached the consensus that it was two four carbon fills up to second period as the outermost shell first shell has two electrons second shell has four electrons this is one way of looking at it some people uh, or some books you can also find that they actually draw like this okay if i were you i would put carbon in the middle okay and then first shell like that and then like i said some books would oh no i don't want that it should have been uh, the best circle you can draw freehand okay so some books will have given you like this and the only reason to draw them in pairs is because uh, it's easy to count two four if you draw this you have to count one two three four it's more effort right so some books will have drawn them like this to be honest these electrons are negatively charged they are always moving in the shell there is no guarantee that you will find them this close to each other because electrons and electrons do repel each other they will move all over the place in three dimension whereas we have only drawn two dimension here so this is one way of doing it but the other way i've shown how to do it is just to look at periodic table and you can work out the electronic configuration easily and from the electronic configuration then you can draw two shells two in the first shell four in the second shell okay so let's try let's try um uh, let's try in terms of uh, the other elements as well okay so the number of valence we use this term valence refers to v-a-l-e-n-c-e -E, is the same as outermost so cambridge really like to use different words like atomic number is proton number like mass number is nuclear number like valence v-a-l-e-n-c-e -E, refer to outermost so valence electron valence electron refer to outermost electron meaning the electrons they are in the outermost shell okay so electrons in outermost shell the outermost shell is the one which is furthest away from the nucleus furthest away from the nucleus you can also think about valence shell valence shell electrons refer to outermost shell electrons so it's not referring to the shell it's actually referring to the electrons okay 
and uh, from the electronic structure we can tell the group and the period so just now we can tell that it's in period 2 because you fill in first period and then you fill in second period and you only stop at here because carbon is in period 2 second horizontal row and then you can tell the group number because the number of valence electrons this is the outermost shell uh, outermost shell furthest away from the nucleus and there are four so number of outer shell electrons and number of valence electrons is equal to the group number so remember the group number is on top of the periodic table and they are given in roman numeral group four has four outer shell electrons group five has five outer shell electrons group one has one outer shell electrons so for example beryllium is in group two it has two outer shell electrons but it's in period two so to go from here to here you have two comma two okay so it's two two for magnesium is in the third period so from hydrogen to magnesium you have two comma eight because eight elements uh, sorry eight electrons across a period two but you want to reach magnesium so two comma eight comma two all right so what i'm saying is magnesium would be two comma eight comma two first shell second shell third shell because you fill up to the third horizontal row which is period one period two period three okay so this is your outermost shell uh, which is furthest away from the nucleus and there are two electrons in the outermost shell there are two valence electrons that's because you're in group two group two has two valence electrons two electrons in the outermost shell that is what this statement is saying okay so we have to fill in a couple of these uh, in order to uh, be familiarized with what is going on by looking at the predict table i hope you can see hydrogen has only one electrons helium has only two electrons in the first shell lithium lithium is in second shell well i mean it fills up to second shell and if you look at lithium just now lithium would be two you fill up to helium then you fill in new horizontal row okay so if i just show you again lithium lithium is here you fill two in the first shell and then comma one in the second shell one electrons in the outermost shell in the second shell okay and beryllium would be two two and boron will be two comma three and so on and so forth and i hope you can do the rest on your own so two three two four two five and that's because if you look at periodic table you would know that this symbol are beryllium lithium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon after neon after helium just now sorry you fill in a new shell after neon you also fill in a new shell the most common mistake with sodium the symbol is na do not ever get confused i tell you even the pure chemistry students even up to a levels they still get confused the symbol for sodium because they don't know sodium has a symbol of na is given in the periodic table for free but you should know the symbol uh, by heart as well okay so it will really help your journey in chemistry if you know the symbol after argon which is group eight noble gases fully fill outer shell okay fully fill outer shell has eight outer shell electrons uh, for argon then you have potassium and calcium first 20 elements up to calcium so i said neon is when you fill up to so number of shell there is the first shell and the first shell after you fill the first shell then you fill in the second shell that's why there's the first shell and the second shell so it's two 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 and then it's the shell number two again but then after so after neon your sodium will be in the third shell that's because to go from hydrogen to sodium hydrogen to sodium looking by the predict table hydrogen to sodium you fill in across the first period two comma eight so now you're here comma one so it's two comma eight comma one for sodium you fill up to period three is group one it's got one outer shell electrons so sodium is going to be two comma eight comma one first shell second shell third shell it has got one outer shell electrons because the third shell is the furthest away in this context whereas here the second shell is the furthest away because you only fill up to second shell 
and so on and so forth and potassium and calcium is in the new horizontal row so that's in the fourth shell because it's in the fourth horizontal row and we can do potassium as 2881 and that is reference from the periodic table so potassium is here you want to go from here to here 2 in the first shell comma 8 in the second shell comma and you haven't reached potassium yet and then you have to fill 8 in the third shell comma and just 1 so for potassium is just 2 8 8 1 2 in the first shell 8 in the second shell 8 in the third shell 1 in the fourth shell there is one electron in the fourth shell which is the outermost this is the innermost this is the outermost is the furthest away from the nucleus there's one outermost shell electron there's one valence electron because they're in group one so very quickly you should be able to fill in the rest i hope um, and then uh, this would be two at two two at three two at four and you got to think about their position number so group five group five this has a symbol of um, v that refers to five in Roman numeral, five outer shell electrons. That's how quickly you can check your answer. So 288, and then the next one is 2882. All right. Group two, you fill up to fourth shell. First shell is filled, second shell is filled, third shell is filled. This is the outermost shell, and there are two electrons in the outermost shell or the valence shell. How many valence electrons are there? So they've used valence C. I personally prefer to use valence, V-A-L-A-N-C-E. It actually means the same thing, but it's better to stick with one rather than the other because earlier uh, the notes actually show you valence, V-A-L-A-N-C-E. How many outermost shell electrons? So this refers to outermost shell electrons. Your outermost shell is just the first shell, so it's just one and two. And even though it's in group 8, so be very careful, this is group 8. But because you're in the first shell, you only have two electrons for helium. So helium is a, a noble gas. Okay, this is also period 1. This is considered group 1 because it's got one outer shell electrons. And this is the really strange one. So helium, all noble gases have filled fill meaning completely fill okay completely fill valence uh, or have full or fill valence shell the first shell can only accommodate two electrons even though it's in group eight because you only have two electrons maximum in the first shell okay uh, lithium is in group one and then you continue across a period so iv is this is actually wrong it should be vi because it's roman numeral for group and it's arabic numeral for period this is second period because it's the second horizontal row group five group six fluorine is group seven then the normal gas is group eight so number of outer shell electron is one two three four five seven and eight so have a look at these and these this is across the second period so the group eight has fully filled outermost shell electrons and therefore your valence shell here is the second shell which can get fully filled up to eight electrons your first shell can only get up to two electrons filled maximum it's still a noble gas it's in group eight noble meaning unreactive group eight eight outer shell electrons group eight two outer shell electrons because the first shell is completely filled and therefore is also in noble gas all right and sodium sodium again is in group one and then magnesium aluminium uh, silicon phosphorus uh, sulfur chlorine is in group seven then the next noble gas is argon okay fully filled outermost shell electrons all right so it's got eight it's got seven six five four three two one remember that these numbers in the outermost shell first shell second shell and third shell you only fill up the third shell here so therefore one outer shell electrons means group one and also one outer shell electrons from the electronic configuration back to group one and group two for potassium and calcium so you got one outer shell electrons and two outer shell electron respectively after period two you fill in the third period which is the third horizontal row and you can fill up to argon 
and then you start a new horizontal row for potassium and calcium which is the fourth horizontal row which is period four arabic numeral period one two three and four first shell second shell third shell fourth shell this is the outermost shell there is one electron in the outermost shell this is group one period four okay if I were you, I would use the predict table very wisely and practice this electronic configuration. And now that you can do the electronic configuration from the predict table, once you get these from the predict table, then you can get some free marks by doing these diagrams, okay? Okay, so that's it for this lecture tutorials and I hope that was useful. Ask me if you got any questions, rest out any queries you have and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me at ptet.chemistry on IGFB. Uh, which is Facebook and also Twitter. All right, see you around.